Hi, I'm Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and I'm here with Lynn Hagmeyer. How are you, Lynn? I'm good. We're so glad, glad to be to back. Have. We had such a great time the last time um, Lynn and I filmed together. And if you remember or haven't seen that video, it's about a book called Loose Change. And Lynn has a new book out. And since I think she's a genius, and I just love the way she sews, <laughs> this one is called Layers of Love. And what Lynn does is layered patchwork on top. So today, what we're going to do this quilt behind us right here. And wait till you see how easy this is. I mean, it's just amazing. It's just so quick and easy. I just love the way you think. It's just amazing to me. So walk us through this, would you? If you are going to traditionally make a pinwheel, there are a lot of parts and pieces. And every time you take a seam and have to press, there's more chance of error. It's true. So if you can cut background squares mm -hmm. and layer on triangles and stitch them, you're just stitching squares together in a row. So what we're going to do is start... Wait, tell us, tell oh. us what we need for the quilt. Just okay. tell us what we need. You need a charm pack and two fabrics, background and border. So how much One of the... charm pack. How much of the background do you need? A couple yards. Okay. A couple yards of each. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you're going to need a couple yards of background, and we have these background squares right here. And then you're going to need just one charm pack? One charm pack. One charm pack makes this? 72 inches square. And that? And leftovers to make a little runner. Oh my gosh. You have to buy that. additional background, obviously. All oh, you yeah. have are leftover pinwheels. But. Very cool. That's really cool. All right. So tell us now, now tell us how to put this baby together. Uh, I like to layer up to three charm squares. I feel like I can still cut and not mess things up with three layers. I do too. I think I three is a pretty good number. I will line up my charm uh, on my mat so that the two and a half inch mark is kind of in the middle. And then use a square ruler, any kind of square ruler that's at least three and a half inches. Most of them are about four. This happens to be a six. Then you can line your 45 degree mark up on a line and oh, feel cool. pretty confident that three and a half is on both sides. And then we're just going to cut the two corners. Very nice. Now we have a bias edge, which we're going to pretend now is a straight edge. So now you can cut a three and a half inch square just like you would cut a three and a half inch square, which also cuts off the other two corners. Very cool. And then you just cut corner to corner and get two big triangles. And I, and I love how you, yeah, I love how you have that laid out on your, okay, on your mat right there because this right here, it's, I mean, it just looks so There's cool. There's your charm square. There's your charm square, yeah. Anytime we're doing layered patchwork, you want to make sure if you do not use the pr factory pinked edge, you have a bias edge or you use a pinked edge rotary cutter because and then wait, go ahead. it doesn't unravel. <laughs> it just curls and frays and you get a nice primitive look without it just That's falling right. apart. We use the bias edge because it doesn't ravel. Correct. That's right. Correct. Very cool. <clears throat> so, so, so then, um, so when I see this actually, I see this cut in half and the corners cut off. So it was interesting to watch you cut that. You show how to do that in your book? I do. This Very technique cool. is in your book. Uh, my brain didn't even go there, but I love <laughs> the fact that you always see things a little bit differently and we can also cut it that way. So if we cut our five and a half inch square. Wait. Oh no. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I actually was thinking, wait, it won't be a square it'll be in half, but that's what we want. That's what we want. So we're cutting it in half first. Right. And then I'll have to think about this a second to get Well, you get the, you correct. Go to the two and a half in here. Right. So there's your, there's your two and a half. There we go. S still basically the same. It's easier though because you, could, you actually have your the half cut marks, yeah. marks to do. So I, six and one half and yes, the other. I love, We're getting to the, I same love place. the different minds, how different minds work. That's really cool. And even as much as I have simplified things, it is amazing to me how you can take it one step further and go, <laughs> we just love oh, each but other. what if? <laughs> and then I just go, yeah. Amazing. Okay, so we'll finish up this other one and then I will get you to. Well, yes, finish that up. Position, and I'll have you sew one. 
So then we get... We have two different size triangles here. And we have our background square. How big are these background squares? They're six and a half inches. Six and a half, okay. So we're going to take one of those, and you guys watch this. This is so cool. So we're going to put this right here. And we're going to take a big triangle and a little triangle. We're going to put a big triangle on one corner and a little triangle on the opposite corner. Now, does it matter which corner? You want to make sure you're, you're putting them all on the same side. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you're going to do lower left. Upper and, right. And upper right on the small. And, Correct. And then, then how, you, you how don't do we attach these? We stitch. Just on an top. An eighth of an inch from your bias edge or from the pink edge. I love that part. <laughs> I love that part <laughs> because there's no pieces to cut. So we are really just going to stitch right along this edge. So I'm going to go to the sewing machine and do that. You're really embellishing a square so you have not distorted the square. Anybody can sew squares together in a row. Yes, even me. <laughs> Especially <laughs> you. I got this lady one time and she says to me, you even sew crooked and it works out. And I'm like, well, I don't try to sew crooked. <laughs> How rude of her to point that out. I know, I just thought that was like, I just thought, well, it, you know, oops, now I'm hung up on something here. I'm doing too much talking. Hang on. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> the eighth inch is, is kind of a basic rule of thumb. I really prefer that if you're going to air one way or the other that you do a thread's width wider than an eighth inch because if you get too close to your bias and you're not perfectly straight and you run off into the pinked points or off your bias edge then when you wash it it is going to uh, come undone a little bit. The beauty of it is you just go back over it and stitch again after uh, you wash it if it comes out because you can go right through your quilting and everything. I love that. This is a quilt that uh, my granddaughter has adopted. The, the Layers of Love book is actually uh, based on the layers is for the layered patchwork. The love part is our eight grandchildren are featured in the book. Each one of them either Aww. selected or I made a quilt uh, based on their personalities. So this one is called the Laney's Twirls and Swirls. She's our dancer diva yeah in the family i don't know why i have so many threads on here that shouldn't be happening it didn't happen on the first one <laughs> no <laughs> okay so now we have hang on a few more threads a bunch of big triangles and a bunch of little triangles all right and they're all going to be stacked here so you you're going to do do you assembly line sew like I do, I do where once you get to a certain point you sew all your all this on and then all that on yeah that's what I do I get all my blocks together I cut all of my charm squares into triangles mm -hmm. I will go through every block and sew the big triangle on one corner and then cut them apart and then flip them around do all it, the it little triangles It keeps me from getting mixed up It yeah, does I then love you that start too. with the same corner every time So as you're laying this out across um, your quilt top we would obviously go in rows and since we don't have enough to show you the whole quilt top we're going to do a block look so how cool that is as the small ones look how cool this is so then so then when the small ones get together so they automatically come together if you put the big ones all together in the middle the little ones are automatically going to come together in the intersections in the corners that is so cool so let's take a look at how this goes so you have a row where you have down pointing down pointing down pointing i mean just a row of that and then you add your next row and i might be inclined myself to sew them together into four patches i actually did i did my pinwheel blocks together because i felt like i had more control over color i think so too oh and, yeah that's true and then really you know randomly uh, there's a couple in here where there may be two colors together uh in the little pinwheels but they're much less obvious so i yeah. don't worry about that but that that's really so cool. the easiest way is to to do sew them together in, in a four patch blocks of rows Okay. Rows of blocks. Yes. <laughs> rows of blocks. You knew what blocks I meant. Of rows. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these together, and I'm going to do it just like a four patch. So just how this is laying here, I'm going to put it right sides together on this one and sew it together. And then we'll do the same thing with this. And this one you're going to do, this is, you're back to your quarter inch seam, correct? 
Even though we use an eighth of an inch seam for our layered patchwork, I am a normal quilter and I use quarter inch <laughs> wait, wait, wait. seams. You, did you just say you were a normal? Well, fairly normal. <laughs> fairly I, use, normal. I use normal quilter quarter inch seams. I have a lot of questions about that. Uh, I didn't realize that in the instructions I needed is to say. Is this the side right here? It is. This okay. is your side right there. I want to rip that one off and I can press it. Yes. Here we go, Mike. Here we go. <laughs> Teamwork here. And I just like to press these the way they want to go away from the pinwheel that has. Look how cool. <laughs> All and right. We'll press this direction for this one. Press this way. Yeah. So it just, it basically just. The, the bulk of your fabric is right here, so it's going to go the opposite direction, which means the other one's also going to go the opposite direction. Make it happy. And, uh, and you'll be able to put those right together. So we're going to layer these on top of each other and then nest up our seams right here so they lay nice and tight. And then we're just going to sew this down. And I have my machine set on a quarter of an inch, but it looks a little fat. But the point, the point is, is that it's most important just to be consistent, correct? It is. On, on a quilt like this where all the blocks are exactly the same, consistency is key. All right, let's iron this baby open. Oh, how cute. Look how cute that is. I have to show. All right, here. Go ahead and iron now. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that is so fun. So then you just put them in blocks, and automatically those little pinwheels now are going to form. Yes, they are. Because as you start putting these little ones together, let's see, it goes. This way. This way. Okay. Because this would make a block in here. Correct. And so then you'd have these tiny ones. So that's how you get the big pinwheels and the small pinwheels. They come right off the corners. So tell us a little bit about your book. How many projects are in here? There are about 21 projects, 12 unique ideas. Uh, we oh, have so cool. eight grandkids, so we added a couple extras. Uh, but with the, the major project and then things like the little runner or we have pillow toppers, um, large and small from two different sizes of pre-cuts just lots of fun things oh and that's that delaney that's miss delaney <laughs> right there so, so this is delaney's what is it delaney's delaney's twirls and swirls delaney's she named twirls it. and swirls and that's a picture of her right there and you have made a special quilt for her she picked out the fabric very cool oh that's beautiful look at that so look at this one you guys isn't that great that's so darling. So any kind of fabric you choose, this will work. It works awesome. It goes together quickly. We love those kind of quilts. Pick a charm pack uh, and, that you love and a background and a border and you're good to go. So we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on Delaney's swirls and twirls. And you can get the pattern in this book, Layers of Love, plus a lot more. Thanks for coming today. It's been so fun to have you. Oh, thanks for having me. It's really great. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.